Hello. What's up, Zach? How you doing, man? Oh, pretty all right. How are you doing today? Doing good. Oh, uh, speaking of like growing up in Mississippi, how was that growing up in the South? Just slow. Yeah. Uh, what was like? What got you into comedy first? Uh, I wrote a, <clears throat> I wrote a short film when I was living out here. I mean, I, I never made it or anything, uh, but I just had this like little short story script and uh, a friend of mine read it and she thought it was really funny. And she told me, you should like check out stand up and go say some of this stuff. And uh, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> so I was like 20. I had just like just turned 21 uh, so I could get into bars and that kind of thing. So I, I started going to like open mics and all that and just never, never quit. <laughs> And then you said uh, you wrote a short film. I actually saw the opener at the beginning of your special. Yeah. And um, I saw that, like, you were thinking about making that into a mini series. What's that like? I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, I worked with my friend Noah and his team. They have an animation studio called ImagineX. They're amazing. They make all kinds of cool shit. Um, and so, yeah, we I worked with them. I've been working with them since October of 2021 to make the opener happen. And uh, yes, yeah, it was a lot of work on their part and they really killed it. And so it was just like proof of concept for this animated show that I wrote called The Niles Abstin Show. Um, so yeah, hopefully, you know, the right person can see that and maybe I can get some like money or somebody produced to make the like the real show. I thought it was pretty funny, especially like the ending part with the battle with the TV guy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, what was it like starting out on the LA comedy scene? Terrible. <laughs> yeah, I tell people all the time, don't start doing stand up out here. It's uh, it's the hardest. I think it's the hardest place to do comedy. One, because everything's so spread out and focused on being a TV star and a movie star and all this kind of shit, not really being funny. <laughs> um, so a lot of things are prioritized that don't have anything to do with being funny. Uh, so yeah, I. I usually advise people not to start out here and like there's not a lot of stage time out here unless you're creating it for yourself which is kind of hard to do starting out because you're just kind of learning how to tell jokes and be funny and everything um but yeah it was really hard man that it was it was a lot of bombing those first couple years and just trying to figure it out uh, but yeah it, it's pretty tough out here how how did you go about getting like stage time and stuff places uh, I didn't. I was just doing open mics. And then eventually somebody, another comedian that you become friends with or thinks you're funny is running a show and they ask you to come do their show. So you go do their show and perform in front of like three or four people that show up and try not to bomb and just keep progressing from there. And, you know, then I got to like, then I started getting booked on more stuff. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, for me, really everything kind of changed once I put my first special out online in 2020 when things started opening back up then i started getting booked for a lot of shit and then i i saw your recent special too in 2022 um at the lincoln lodge in chicago yeah. was like a significant reason that you chose chicago to film it yeah um I, my first time ever going on tour was in 2021 uh and i went to chicago september 2021 and it was just a great show and i did some other really really fun shows that week and I just, it was my first time ever in Chicago, and I just had a really, really good time. Um, so I was just like, I have if next time I tape a special, I have to do it here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so in the Lincoln Lodge, they're always really good to me. I'm working on setting up some more shows out there for this year. So yeah, I was like, let's go there and let's do the big room and sell that out twice and let's shoot a special. How do you usually go about writing for yourself? Do you do more on stage writing or do you kind of like sit down with a notebook and pen? As far as like stand up jokes, yeah, yeah, I just kind of come up with it on stage. Like, um, like if I think of something funny, uh, I'll just like write down a couple words in my little notes app on my phone, and then I'll just go on stage with my phone and just go through the notes app and just go down, go down the list until I, I'm <laughs> done with everything. Um, and then usually I try to find something funny, and then whatever was like had the got the biggest reaction. That's usually what I hammer in on and like all right well let's get as much out of this as we can and do you have like three favorite comics that you kind of look up to <clears throat> like currently or like uh, just all, time? all time um richard pryor 
Red Fox, and uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Uh, I heard he's coming out with a new live special on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a do you have like a comedy mentor right now? I know you said like Kevin Hart's your boss, but uh, do you have anybody else that you would say? Um, I would say probably the closest thing to a comedy mentor I've had is Roy Wood Jr. He's awesome. He always gives me good advice whenever we talk, and I've gotten to open for him a couple times, and I worked with him on some stuff. That's pretty cool. Do you still like going on the road? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I I wish I could do it at like a bigger capacity with like money behind it and resources and shit but even just like the little broke touring shit i do where i have to put up everything myself like it's still fun i have a good time i know i talked to some comedians and they like have kind of gotten a little exhausted with it are there any like road horror stories or anything like that um yeah i mean i got robbed in oakland oh uh, yeah i heard about that on your... yeah i got robbed in oakland i got a oh, good joke out of it though but yeah yeah <laughs> Were you kind of thinking that at the time or was it more just? No, it was just, I mean, it just was shitty because we were leaving a show and then we were like, yo, the rental car got busted, you know? Um, so that sucked. But I mean, after, like, but then like the next day, it was just kind of, I had another show the next day. So it was just kind of like, all right, well, it's time to be funny again. Fuck this <laughs> shit. So I just, uh, I, I did like a whole set just kind of on that whole thing and what happened and just got some funny stuff out of it. So. And then I, I actually heard in your special, you said that you were a Division One athlete. Uh, what was that like in college? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I run. I ran track in college, and um, but I just, I got injured a lot my freshman year, so I I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to. Uh, but it was fun, you know. You you know people people like having athletes around and <laughs> get to wear the like the they give you really cool like sweats and stuff like that. And it was cool, and I got to travel a few times. Yeah. What was like last year like for you with the uh, just releasing your special and then the Vulture article and your animated short? Uh, I mean, it was just like a lot of work just to get to the point to get it done and uh, release it. Because um, let's see, I started I started touring in like June, June of 2022. Uh, we did like a month long tour. And uh, that was where I really developed, like, I had the set, I had the hour set, but then that month I just really developed it even more because we were getting up every night. Um, so that was fun. And then, uh, and then like, the animated short, it was really just kind of going back and forth with the animators because they, they worked really, really hard to pull that off in that time frame. I mean, it was only four of them working on it. And that's, that's why we want to make the TV show because it's just, like, everybody's like, yo, this looks like it's a movie or it could be on TV yeah. and... And it's like, yo, like four people did that. So imagine if we really had like a team and a studio behind us and all that kind of stuff, like we could really make something special. Um, so, yeah, it was just a lot of work to get to that point. So it was just it was kind of exhausting. And then to end so we and to end the year like that. So I just been kind of trying to rest and for a little bit. That makes sense. Do you have like a favorite moment all time in comedy? Favorite moment favorite. all time in comedy. Um, probably taping my, either taping my first special or, um, taping my second special. It's just, they're just fun nights, you know, cause, uh, everybody's there cause they know they're about to witness something really dope. And like my first special, that was my first time ever doing an hour ever. Um, and it was just like an experiment kind of, and it went so well. So we were just like, let's put it out. And it was just a really fun night with my friends, and it was really dope. Felt really accomplished to pull something off like that. Um, and then just like Chicago was fun for different reasons, where <clears throat> we had gone on this long tour and we had we we had accomplished so much. And Chicago, I'd done a smaller room when I was there, and it just sell out like the bigger room at the Lincoln Lodge twice in one night. I had never that was the most tickets I'd sold in one night um, to in a, to sell out that room twice was really like dope uh, and uh yeah it was just a really fun night with my friends that were there in chicago and also just to do it in a different city because a lot of people were just kind of like oh well, you live in la and your friends are in la so that's why people were laughing in your first special which is bullshit it's not really true um so like i just went to a completely different city where i don't really know that many people and sold it out twice so. that's amazing 
do you have like a favorite part of doing comedy like whether it be the stage or hanging out with comics afterwards or um definitely hanging out with the comics after um but i mean i love performing that's that's fun when you perform especially when you're trying out like the best thing is like when you're, you're trying out something new and it works and you're like oh shit it works okay and then the uh, and then the other time is just like when you're uh tape when you're taping and you you know exactly when people are gonna laugh and you know exactly when things are gonna hit the way it does and on the taping usually it hits even harder so it's just like that's when you get to tape that's so fun is there a particular room that you like playing like whether it's just a fun atmosphere and cool staff or if it's like you do really well every time you go there um i really like union hall in new york that's a really good cool, that's a really dope spot i like that do you have any uh crazy heckler stories um not really i don't really get heckled much um which is part of the reason why i don't i don't post like crowd work clips because i don't i don't want people coming to the shows and yeah. being like, all right i want to say something like i don't i don't care for that i don't think that shit's funny like a lot because a lot of those clips is just like somebody guessing a dude's name right or <laughs> making fun of their shirt and it's just like i feel like it's the lowest form of comedy like it's it's not funny the audience is doing the funny shit not you <laughs> Um, but no, I don't really have any crazy heckler story. Well, I, let me take that back. I do, but it wasn't, a, but it wasn't a dude at the show though. Um, during, you know, during 2021, you had, we were having to do all kinds of different stuff to keep doing live comedy. And so there was these guys that would run this show in the park, not too far from here. So I was doing the show in the park and this homeless man who was like methed out just started screaming at me. And he started calling me like an ugly communist and he had a dog with him and the dog was barking and he was yelling and he started like running towards me and shit. And the photographer kind of like got in the way and he's a big, the photographer's a bigger dude and he got the guy to like leave. But it was, it was, he just kept yelling at me as he left. But that was, that's probably like the weirdest like heckler thing, but he wasn't like a audience member at the show. We were just in the park and he was homeless in the park and didn't like that we were loud. Oh my. Do you have a comic that you always enjoy working with? Um, yeah, um, I'd probably say Yodoye Travis, Leah Sampson, or uh, Skylar Higley. They're like my favorites. What makes you laugh personally? Like, what even just laugh? a giggle. What makes me laugh personally, like stand up wise, or um, stand up, or just like I don't know, see somebody trip, or um, I, I love like hanging out at a show and something happens like outside of the show and the comedian goes up and like talks about it or somebody he says something or he or she says something in the back and he goes up there because it's just kind of like a it's like a behind the scenes thing of like damn i was a part of that moment and he just made it funny for the whole audience like i love <laughs> i love that kind of shit do you have a favorite show you've ever performed yeah i uh I produced this show when I first when I first started getting my set together for this new special. I produced this show August of 2021 at this place called the El Cid out here in L.A. And uh, a lot of it was just it was packed. We sold about 130 tickets. It was packed out. Uh, I had friends from like different cities that flew in to like come see it and stuff. And it was like the, this is like my first time like like doing the hour. And it, it, it's not what's the special, of course, because it was that was like a year, a year before. But uh, a lot of it did make it in, and it was just a great show. A lot of my friends opened for me. It was it was a big show, and then um, they had this huge like um, lobby lobby area like outside, and everybody just stayed and hung out and had a good time. It was just a it was just a great show and great vibe and everything. Uh, what's like the favorite joke you've ever told? My favorite joke I've ever told. Um. My favorite joke I've ever told. I think I just told it Saturday Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. It uh every time I think I have my favorite joke, but it's not. But like probably like my favorite jokes that, you, that you've probably seen. Uh I had this joke on my first special about Martin Luther King that I think is just great. Um that was one of my favorites. And then my and then the, the joke on my second special about um uh, 
I had a joke on my second special about how I hate uh, transracial adoption. Yeah. And I, I just love that joke so much. And, uh, <laughs> the super. I don't. I basically just like I had this joke about how I pitched a movie that's about a black vigilante that kidnaps black children from the white families that adopt them. And then I just kind of go into how I just I think transracial adoption is stupid. And I, <laughs> I think people should stop white people should stop doing that shit. And like basically like I see it as like white people, these rich white people, they adopt like black and Asian kids and they flex them like chains like rappers do. <laughs> and uh, and so, yeah, I just have this whole joke about like transracial adoption and how I think it sucks. But that's probably like my uh, it's probably my, my favorite joke I've told publicly. Um, but yeah, I have this I have a new joke I did Saturday that I think might be my new favorite one. <laughs> Uh, what do you got coming up in like the next year? Do you have anything that we should know about so we can promote or anything? Yeah, um, you know, I'm doing I'm doing shows with my friends. I have a podcast called Y'all Had to Be Here, and so we do live shows together. And so uh, we're going to Portland and Seattle next month, and then we're doing uh, some more cities the rest of the year. And then my first episode of television will be coming out in a few months. Uh, I wrote for Dave this past season. The show premieres in April. So I think my episode might come out like end of May, early June, something like that. Sorry, I got a couple more questions. <laughs> what was writing on Dave like? It was it was awesome. It was my first time ever writing for TV. And, you know, I'm, I'm only 27. So I was in college when Lil Dicky blew up. So it's just like interesting to see that as like a spectator. And then now I, wor I work with him. Uh, he's a really cool guy. And uh, Gata's really cool. And all the all the. All the actors are so fun and all the writers are really cool people and so it was just a really like collaborative process and I'm, I'm excited to see how the season turns out i think we i think we have some really good episodes this season i think it's the best season yet so oh i'm excited to watch it now uh i, I think that's all i got for you okay um we'll make sure to keep in touch with you because i know we also have a screenwriting team here and i don't know if you'd be interested at all but we might okay want to see if you want to do a skit or something at some point okay yeah let me know thank you so much for your time this was huh. this was of great course, man thanks for interviewing me i appreciate it oh thank you and then i'll uh i'll keep you updated on when the article's coming out and everything okay. any there's anything else you need just let me know sounds good thank you right. so much of course man have a good one thank you you too all right